Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So how did I come up with today's pattern to tie? Really, I just wanted something colorful and fun, and I found it in Art Lindgren's Fly Patterns of British Columbia, the Roderick Haig Brown Centenary Edition. Now I haven't reviewed this book, and I'm not sure that I plan to, but I do really like it. It's still available today, it was published in 2008, but it's really a tribute to Roderick Haig Brown, a pretty noted author and conservationist from out in British Columbia. Now the pattern I'm tying today, it's called the Yellow Bell. They don't really know who created it, but it's obviously just inspired by or a variation of a parmesan bell. It's got the yellow and red or a yellow and purple or some kind of yellow and darker material as a married wing. Now I don't tie a lot of married wing flies. Really, they're just kind of challenging to tie and not always that easy. But if you do tie one that looks good, well, it looks really good. And if it doesn't, well, you just got another fishing fly. So today's pattern, definitely a colorful one. I think it was fun and I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a yellow bell, a purple variation of it. Certainly that middle stripe could be red. And I would say the common sizes for this are whatever you tie big wet flies on or your salmon flies. So maybe as big as a four, six or eight. I am using a salmon hook but it's an eight, so it's a fairly small one. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch my barb right there and then put down a base of 70 denier thread. Let me show you one thing before I do that. With a lot of these old salmon hooks, you have that bend over right there and you might have a little bit of a gap. And if you do, you can contend with that with your tinsel if you have a, an oval or a wire tinsel. It's not that big a gap in this case, but I'll do it anyway just to show you what I'm talking about. But first thing we're gonna catch in is our tail. And it's just a little bit of yellow over purple. This is goose, you could use duck, depending on how big a slip you need. Um, and marry them if you want to. I don't think it's that important right here because you know they might come apart after we get them tied in anyway. So I'm just gonna cheat a little bit on my side right here. Do a little pinch wrap and bring it up. My goal is to keep that on top of the hook and let's see, I've got three wraps on it right there. Any adjusting if I need to? Is it on the top? Yeah, I think so. So a few tight wraps right here just to catch this in for good. And we don't have to worry about keeping a smooth body right here because we have a big, we're gonna use seals fur. So we have a big, big fuzzy body here in just a second anyway. But before we do that body, let's go ahead and catch our thread in up here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we have it in right there, kind of on the side, and we've kind of minimized that gap between the bend and the shank of the hook. So let's just go ahead and carry it back. Now I am dubbing this with seals fur, real seals fur, which is a kind of a mess and big fuzzy material to work with. If you don't have this, I'd use a wool, maybe an Angora goat or something that's equally as fuzzy. And I am gonna put a pretty big noodle on because I think I'm gonna do a, a dubbing noodle or dubbing loop right here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So that stuff has not gone on my thread very tight at all. So I'll grab my finger, create this little loop and take it back up here. Maybe a few wraps going back. That's gonna be good. I take my thread up here to where I wanna finish my body. And then I've got my weighted dubbing spinner right here. Just hook it around the end. It's around the end. Put my finger up over it. Kind of hard to see right there. And now I'm just gonna spin this. And after a few spins, that thread will start spinning. And now I'm creating my, kind of like a dubbing brush, but you know, just a, a loop right here. And I can wrap that just like I would any material. I am gonna use my spring-loaded pliers right here so I can take it out of the spinner. And now I can just wrap this back. Now, if I wasn't making a video and I didn't have this backdrop four inches behind my vise, I would probably use my rotary function here. It would make this a good bit easier to do. 
but I'll speed this up. Just go ahead and wrap this up to the front of the fly. Now we can go ahead and catch this off with a couple of wraps. And before I take this out of my hackle pliers, I'll just go ahead and snip it. And that is a big, buggy, fuzzy body, but don't worry, it's still caught in very well. It's a durable fly, even as fuzzy looking as it is. So a few extra wraps right there. Now let's go ahead and wrap this rib. And I'd say four or five turns on this size eight is gonna be just fine. Okay, a couple extra wraps right there. This is not a wire, so you can't really uh, helicopter it off. You're gonna have to get in here and cut it. Now, one option we have for the throat, and the one I did before, I just got cheap, strong saddle hackle. I had a yellow and a purple piece, and I tied it in from the tips, the small end, and put two turns around it, then bunched that collar up and pushed it down as a beard but I ended up with too big of a head, I think. So what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm just gonna pull out some of the fibers and then tie it in directly as a throat, just like this right here. And that's always an option on a fly that has a, a throat, whether you wanna spin it as a collar or just tie it in directly as a throat right here. And sometimes this way right here is a little bit easier. Certainly if your hackle is maybe bigger than you want, doing it as a throat like this might be the only way to go. So I think that's the size we want. Let's go ahead and get in here, cut the, that excess off right there. A few extra wraps just to get us a smooth base for tying in our wing. Now this is where the fun part comes in. So married wings are pretty tricky to do but here's one tip I do. I marry them before I take them off of the, the feather, off the stem. So say this yellow feather right here, I just pulled a little yellow slip off, pulled a slip of my purple off and married it to it, then put that yellow slip back. Then I can just cut that piece off right there and I have a perfect wing. So what you wanna do, you, you definitely need to make sure that you have a left and a left and a right and a right. Now when you've got your two married slips put together, just try to line up the tips. These aren't perfect right there, but I think we're gonna make them work. And just tie it on like you would any kind of wet fly wing, old school winged wet fly. Um, you get about three tries to get this right. So I'm pinching my hook and the feathers. I'm gonna put a pinch wrap, but fairly loose, and then come up on it right here before I put that second wrap down. And with any luck, they're still coming off the top of the fly. And they are a little bit, again, those tips aren't lined up perfectly, but I think we'll get away with it. So put a few tighter wraps right here. I don't really want that to flare up too much on me. So I've got some tight wraps right there. And yep, yeah, those wings, uh, well, we'll make this a fishing fly and not a, a presentation fly anyway. So let's go ahead and snip off the excess up here and work on our head. Take my thread right back behind the eye and then just ramp it up. Build as big a head as you want for a, a big old winged wet fly. Salmon fly or steelhead fly, whatever you wanna make it. I think that's big enough. Let's go ahead and wet finish this thing. And there you have it. A little drop of head cement. Maybe burn those fibers off right there. This thing's good to go. So I appreciate you watching, everybody. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.